So when I met this person, I was a bright personality. Mm -hmm. So when I was working at the restaurant, I had this bright personality and I met this girl one time, this woman, she wasn't a girl, she was a woman. Mm -hmm. And then bright personality, I introduced myself to her. And I'm like, man, she feeling me, I'm feeling her. We exchanged numbers, we met up. And then my virginity. You lost it. <sighs> Gone. Yeah. She came back, we hugged, we cried, and then she said, I'm sorry. She came back to get us. Because she's like, you guys didn't go to school for three years? Mm. All you did was work with adults? All you did... You say, yeah, Mata didn't want to take us. And she felt so bad because we're like kids. We're supposed to be in somebody's school getting mm -hmm. educated. Mm -hmm. And she felt bad. So she came back and she um, got us from the, the islands. We went back. Another hurdle. So I had an accent when I came back. Mm -hmm. I spoke like Bahamians. Mm -hmm. like yeah, Bahamian. three years. You yeah, three have that. years. You so I ended up having like a accent. dialect. Yeah. So at that time, when I went to the, um, to where my, my aunt started signing us up for school, I was 15 years old. And they said, nope. We, they said the last grade that he stopped at was sixth grade. That's mm -hmm. the same grade he, we going to put him at. Wow. I said, you got to be at kidding. 16. I was 15 going 15, on 16. 15 going on 16. I was 15 in the sixth grade. Wow. Because when I went to the Bahamas, I was in the sixth grade. Wow. Yeah. And then my aunt was like, um, you sure? Like, can y'all? Because me and my cousin, we're around the same age. Out. Yeah. My cousin and I was in the same grade. Me and him was supposed to be on the same grade level. One of my other cousins. And I was like, I want to get to my cousin. So here I am. I'm with one of my baby cousins. We're the same grade. Wow. And then so now, and my other brother as well, he was like 20-something, like close to 20 years old. <laughs> like, what is it, 18 in the ninth grade wow. type stuff. Yeah. So my aunt felt so bad. So now we had to deal with the trauma we dealt with in the Bahamas. Came back here getting picked on. Mm, so you get more trauma. Yeah, more trauma. So here I'm, I'm in the sixth grade, 15 years old in the sixth grade. Kids laughing at me. How old you are? 15, ah, are you supposed to be in the grade? Ah. To make matters worse, we was getting picked on at school, and I go home, my cousins then picking on me. The ones, yeah, my, my auntie. Your aunt's kids. Yeah, auntie kids. So they said, like, man, man, Nick, yeah, y'all y'all some big kids, y'all. You know what I mean? You know, kid jokes. Yeah, y'all <laughs> y'all some big kids in the sixth grade, ninth grade. So I kind of like felt bad, you know what I'm saying? But I think I always had that thing inside of me, like, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Exactly. That was inside of me, like, I'm not going to let this fly like this. I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Yeah. So what ended up happening is I ended up talking to some counselors. I said, look, if there's something that y'all could do, because at that point, I'm 16 years old in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on. like I was 60 years old in sixth grade. Y'all got to be able to help me figure something out. And it was like, hey, you know, we got this program. Maybe we could, you know, work work with you. And they said the best that we could do for you is just to move you one grade up. So you go from sixth grade to the seventh, seventh grade. Seventh grade, yeah. And then, so I worked hard. I worked really hard, real hard. And then they moved me up. So I was seven. I was in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So that, that was cool because I was supposed to graduate. In a sense, I was supposed to graduate in the year 2000 and undergraduate in 2001. Okay. So that I was like, you know what? That is better than nothing. It's better than nothing. nothing. So at that point, all my family members started dropping out of school. Like dropping out of high school, dropping out of middle school. And here I am, I'm persevering. I'm still persevering. I'm like, look, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. So throughout my middle school years, um, you know, still had that hood mentality because, you know, the, we are the product of our environment. The product of your environment. So, you know, we build certain characteristics. We build certain ways. Like, I ain't going to let nobody try me. Mm -hmm. And that's the mindset. You know, you ain't like, it's not like I grew up with a, with, grew up with a dad. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to came back to the U.S., I still have biblical principles because I learned that for three years. I'll never forget when I was in middle school, and I'm saying this to probably a middle schooler. When I came back from, to the, um, from the Bahamas, I was in the cafeteria, and I'm like, we got the free food and I'm sitting there by myself and I'm like, I got to pray. Mm. So I'm looking around. Maybe a middle school might feel this way. Right. I'm looking around like. If anybody going to see me pray, I don't want nobody to see me, <laughs> watch me gotcha. pray. Mm -hmm. So here I am. I close my eyes and I said a prayer and, and I start to build those habits. Like I'm going to pray for my food over my food Absolutely. because this is a, something that I learned in the Bahamas. You know, seeing my uncle do these things in church, they taught us these things. So I took what I got from the Bahamas and I brought it back to the U.S. So when my auntie would, look, would cook, I would pray. My cousins and them, they wasn't into that. Because mm -hmm. we're not going to church at this time. Mm -hmm. My auntie, because now you're teenagers, you're going through puberty. We already think we're grown. 
Yeah, yep. my auntie can't control boys. Like now we like rough. We're like little men. Like you can't tell us much. Mm -hmm. So I started to build those, you know, those principles, you know, those habits when I came back to the States. But what happened was I was around bad company. Mm, bad company. Yeah, that's the thing. Good morals. Now, here's the thing I want you to elaborate on because I want you to see the hand of God. Three years. Mm -hmm. What does the number three represent? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, completion, perfection. Right? Yeah. God needed you out of your environment for three years to do mm. what? Plant a seed. Wow. What was the seed that he started to plant? You saw your uncle going to church. Yeah. And you had to be there. There was something that flipped inside of you because, number one, you almost died. Oh, yeah. Several times. Several times. Yeah. But that last one where this man is shooting at you ready to take your life. Because you was with the manager. Mm -hmm. And then Matant comes and picks you up right after that. The lesson that you were supposed to learn, what do you think it was? I, I think when you're a kid, because remember, I'm a kid, mm -hmm. you know, people at this point now talking about life and death. Mm -mm. You hear things like that. And even what I failed to share with you earlier is that I didn't know where people go when they die. Mm. You got to understand that like when I was a kid, I was sharing this with my, and we're going to get to that point in the episode. I, I didn't know where people go. All I know, is, all I've used to hear throughout the years, heaven and hell, mm -hmm. how to get there. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I thought just when people, I'm saying as a kid, I'm, this is what I'm thinking as a kid. If something would have happened to me, where would I go? Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. Again, it probably was preached at the church. But I'm a kid. I'm going there for the girls. And whatever seed that enters in my heart, it enters into my heart. Gotcha. Yeah. But the thing that got my attention when the preacher talking about talking my girls and hell, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> but still, it's not clicking. Like, how do one get to where God is mm -hmm. as a middle schooler? Yeah. A 12, 13-year-old. You're not thinking about it. You're just thinking, okay, that bullet would have hit me. I don't know where I would go. <laughs> that part maybe i'm good with god i don't know that part yeah because uh, and, and it's sad to say there's a lot of people that think that yeah they think that they're right with god that if something ultimately leads them to their demise that god is going to automatically give them a ticket mm. because you're good here's your ticket come on in and that doesn't work it doesn't yeah work that way yeah and so that's why you know we're going to talk about how jesus christ has a process yeah. for you to get to that point yeah that's yeah. what I wasn't taught. And we talked about discipling. Yeah. It's how everything, how everything turn around. Exactly. That if you're not being discipled yeah. and being taught the love of God yeah. and building the relationship with God, you ain't going to understand. You're not. You know what you're going to say? Oh, I'm a good person. Yeah. I deserve to get go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you got to let me in. Just you got to let me in. <laughs> I'm a good. Yeah. I'm a good. You just said don't call nobody good. There's only one but good. And that's God. And that's God. That's God. <laughs> so now you're in the seventh grade. Let's kind of fast forward a little to your, your graduating from, you know, middle school to high school. Like, mm. what was that like? Yeah, I want to. Oh, this one right here is the turning point for me. When I mean, because remember, um, I grew up in an environment where you taught to be tough, manly, gangster, mm -hmm. rough up dudes, beat yeah. up dudes, jump yeah. dudes, um, get women, get them all. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So when, when, when I came back to the States, I said in my mind, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to be sleeping with no woman before marriage. Mm -hmm. Cause remember what I learned in the Bahamas. What you learned in the Bahamas. So yeah. imagine in middle school, they was talking about those things. This person sleep with this person. And I'm like, really? Like to middle me school? in middle school. Yeah. It was it was um high school kids used to come pick up the middle schoolers. Yeah. Cuz I used to see those cars like oh yeah such and such talking that high school high school next door. Yeah, they talk to each other. Grown pig, grown like Yeah. This type of stuff you used to see. Yeah. So in my mind again based on what I learned I'm like nah that's not how you do things cuz they got to be a husband and wife and you yeah. know, so that's why I I did, I said, you know what? I'm not going to be sleeping with no girls. So I didn't sleep with no girls like in middle school. So let me tell you the turning point for me. Um, so I was hanging around with a friend of mine because at this this point, I'm like, I need to look for a job, mm -hmm. you know, in middle school. So middle school at that time, the middle school that we went to, it was from sixth to ninth grade. Okay. It was like kind of rare because, you know, 
middle school, I mean, high school starts from nine to 12, mm-hmm. but the middle school we went to from sixth grade to ninth grade. Mm-hmm. So when I was in the ninth grade, and I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about how I transitioned over. So when I was in the ninth grade, the final year of that middle school, um, at that point, I'm maturing now. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm getting older now. I'm getting wiser. Yeah. And I, I must have been like, what, 17? 17 at that point. I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, um, I need to start manning up. I see my auntie struggling. Um, I need to look for a job. Mm. So I, and then I said, you know what? Let me go look for a job. And then, so my friend and I, we wanted to look for a job. And again, it goes back. And I'm going to talk about that briefly, but it goes to, I, I want to say that before I say this, that bad communication corrupt good manners i know you said that early yep. bad communication corrupt Corrupts good manners, good manners. Yeah, i'm gonna say that again bad communication corrupt good manners yeah but i'm gonna tell you how powerful god is my ninth grade year i had a teacher and i mentioned her in a past episode miss mm-hmm. wilson miss mm-hmm. wilson you probably gonna listen to this again miss wilson was like a teacher that cared mm. she wasn't just a teacher that cared about the paycheck she was a teacher that cared about students, mm, their well-being. That's rare. Yeah, that's, ra- that's I, I, I mean, rare. I'm not in the school system now, but I'm that's sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I look the way that I looked at her looking back in hindsight. God put her there for a reason. Yep. Got it. So she used to see, you know, see me say certain things, do certain things. And she used to check me. No, Nick, that's not you. Mm-hmm. No, Nick, you're better than this. Mm. She like she used to instill these positive affirmation words in me. Keep in mind things I've never heard before. Yeah. Because black folks, they're not giving their black children affirmation. Nope. They're not telling them you're gonna be a mount to be somebody. Yeah. You're a leader. You're you're so you're you have a you're a positive role model. Yeah. You're gonna be somebody. You're not hearing those things in black communities. No. That's why I would tell my son and my daughter, I, I, do the I same speak with affirmation. Yeah. So I wasn't getting that type of stuff. Yeah. So when Miss Wilson came along, Miss Wilson seen the best in me. Mm. I didn't see it at the time because I I still want to dab with certain groups of people. Because now you remember I'm I'm far fetched from the behind the the language, the dialect, the Bahamas. Mm. So I'm dibbling dabbling with certain indiv- individuals, but at the same time I got biblical principles. Mm. So I'm like, oh, so I'm like in the middle now. Yeah, like yeah. I know what's right. Yeah, but at the end, of the, I come from a corrupt background. Now I know what's right. Mm-hmm. But kind, I kind of like. The, both of them at the same time right yeah yeah i still want to pray before i eat yeah but at the same time i like the thought of being rough and the girls like the bad dudes yeah because that's how it was i don't know if it's still like that to this day the girls like the girls like the the rough dude oh yeah he a thug yeah i like i like him i like him they They don't like the soft ones they don't like the soft (laughs) we learn let me put it this way we learning (laughs) we learning (laughs) we learning so what happened so i had to share this story because about miss wilson because one day I went to go look for a job, dressed up, dressed up. My friend and I, we end up, we went through the interview process. Mm-hmm. And then my friend, he was excited. We ended up getting the job, by the way. Mm, good. And then my uh, a friend of mine, he did a he 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 did something that he wasn't supposed to do. Gotcha. Which ultimately led me in a detention center. Okay. So Miss Wilson was like, um, I haven't seen him in class. Where is he? And my my aunt says, I'm not going to get him. He going to stay right there. I said, you got to be kidding me. So here I am. I'm 17 years old. I'm like, man, like, Monty don't care. Like, like, and you see all these little young dudes, like your skin complexion, you know, they rub, they tatted up, they twisting their hair. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you see these things, and I'm looking, I'm looking through the little peephole. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're about that too. We're about that too. But at the same time, I'm sitting in the jail cell. It's like you, you, you in that detention center, you got time to think. <laughs> you got time to think. Like, yeah. what are you going to do with your life? Yep. So I'm thinking about, man, like, this teacher care about me? My friends, my auntie don't care about me because she don't want to come get me. And then I'm twisting my hair up. And at the same time, I see one of my younger brothers in the same place I was at. At the wow. same time. So... I see a a dude. I'm like, wait a minute. That's my brother. Mm. Hey, bro. You know, so that's, remember the the environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at this stuff. I'm drawing. I used to draw back then. Mm -hmm. I don't draw no more. Mm -hmm. So I used to draw a lot. My feelings, I used to draw a lot. So I'm drawing the detention center. I'm drawing all this stuff in my art book. 
And then what really got me, Miss Wilson wrote me a letter mm. while I was in the jail. She wrote me, try not to get emotional. Miss mm. Wilson, you watching this. Try not to get emotional. <laughs> she wrote me a four-page letter. Wow. Yeah. I was 17 years old, jumpsuit. I read the letter. I broke down. Mm. She said, Nixon, this is not you. And she spoke to me through that letter. Mm. She said that she wanted to see me, like, but the authorities didn't want her like pay me a like a visit, an in-person visit. So she said the best that she could do is write me a letter. She wrote that letter. Mm. It broke me down. When they care, they care. That was the turning point for me. At that moment, I told myself, I'm not going behind bars no more. Mm. I'm not going to no detention center no more. That's that that's it. So I started to grind. I started to do everything that I could to to do my best to graduate. And I ended up graduating middle school. I mm-hmm. you know, end up um leaving the detention center 21 days later mm-hmm. and then came, you know, embraced Miss Wilson for what she did. I straightened up, you know what I mean? I ain't getting no trouble. Mm-hmm. And then boom, I transitioned to high school. I was excited. I was playing basketball. I'm I'm all I'm doing the, all the right things. I'm in school, I'm focused. And now this at this point, all my family members, they had this, they dropped out of school at this point. And, you still and I'm the out. only one like grinding, oh, no. grinding, yep. grinding. And it's not to take an aim at, you know, my siblings or anything like that. I just want them to, I want people to see the hand of God because I could have had that choice too. We're living exactly. in the same household. Exactly. We're living in the same exactly. household. So I could have said, you know what, since they doing it, let me do it too. But the beauty of your story is that through all of it, God is orchestrating. God's purpose was never for you to be a thug. Mm. God's purpose was for you to understand that you have a special calling on your life. Right, right. Going into the detention center, God used this woman to write a four page letter. Who you know sit there writing four page letters to anybody, unless you're writing a love letter to your uh, to your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or whatever. Right, right. right? This person sat down and write you wrote you a four page letter and pour her heart into it. It wasn't her heart. That was God speaking to you. Yes. That was God affirming you. That was God saying, I created you for something great. I was telling your sister today, the thing that we have to understand about the enemy is he's not omniscient. Yes. yes. He doesn't have access to this. Only God has that power. Right. right? But the enemy knows you're born. Mm. The enemy doesn't know why you're born, but the enemy knows you are born, which means God purposed you for something. So if I take your mother, If I take your father out of your life, if I send you to the Bahamas, if I do all these things that you deem, like you said, my son didn't love you. My son did the best thing for you by keeping you in there. Right, right, right. To you, she hated you. Right. But for God, I need you to stay in there. I'm going to put Mm. it on her heart so that you don't come out. Because your breaking point happened when? In the detention center. In the detention center, yeah. And you cleaned up your act. Yeah. Right? Right, That's all God. Satan now is like, hold up. He he cleaned up his act. Mm. He's graduated. He doing what? So let's go ahead and go to life after high school. <laughs> well, so life after high school. So in 12, let me say 12th grade, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in high school. I got a job. I was playing basketball. I stopped playing basketball because I really want to help mom because remember when I when I in middle school I got locked up I went to the detention center because um that the situation that happened but remember I went to a job interview they actually hired us Mm. so we I didn't end up getting the job so when I was in um high school I ended up getting a job at a different place gotcha yeah so and I only ended up getting a job because when I was playing basketball um I didn't have support there was nobody to support me with the gotcha. sport. So I said, man, my auntie's struggling. I got to get this money. Yeah. I don't want to go on the streets and do it illegally. So let me, let me go work. I, mean, I see my uncle work. Yeah. So you remember it's things that you see. Yeah. I say, I see my uncle work. So I guess let me go work and try to support my aunt. Mm-hmm. So uh, I ended up getting a job at Wendy's. I'm going to say Wendy's because I kind of like Wendy's. So I got to give him a shout out. <laughs> I don't know how Wendy's is now. 
back in the day it was the bomb go ahead but i ended up getting a job at the at restaurant um, while i was in high school mm -hmm. and then all the way up to the point uh, a year after high school so what happened is when i graduated from high school i was still working at wendy's and um and and this, this is i'm glad that you asked that you know life after high school i'm working at wendy's and and all all throughout the years middle school high school virgin Mm. I I said, you know, because remember what I said earlier, I didn't I seen a family structure, mm -hmm. husband, wife, children, mm -hmm. church, God standards. Right. That's why I'm big on that. Mm -hmm. So when I preach about like family, I know God standards work. Exactly. So that's why I'm going this with this direction. That's why I said I'm glad that we're coming to this pivotal point. And this obviously this is another turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. Working at Wendy's. Virgin. Didn't bother no woman. She ain't, they ain't my wife. I ain't gonna mess with them, right? Mm -hmm. And I met this woman. I, I always had like this flirtatious attitude. I always had this cocky attitude. Mm -hmm. Like I could get anybody. So even though I wasn't doing nothing in high school, middle school, they always thought I was doing something because the way my demeanor, like, I'm like, I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to talk to opposite gender. That's yeah. how I was in the world. So when I met this person, I was a bright personality. Mm -hmm. So when I was working at the restaurant, I had this bright personality and I met this girl one time this woman she wasn't a girl she was a woman mm -hmm. and then bright personality i introduced myself to her and i'm like man she feeling me i'm feeling her we exchanged numbers we met up and then my virginity you lost it <sighs> gone yeah and at that point she was already older than me she had a child already so mm -hmm. she had experienced that before mm -hmm. i haven't i didn't know like that would lead into my mind going crazy. Mm -hmm. I lost it. This was this is lust, y'all. This is not love. It's lust. Let me make yeah. that clear. Yeah, that's lust. So I hooked up with her. I'm like, man, I love her, but like I said, it's not love. It was more lust. Was I lust. desired her. Yeah, and then so I was losing my mind. I'm like, why can't I? I can't stop thinking about her. Mm -hmm. I can't stop wanting to be around her. So she was digging me. That's what I thought. And, you know, I was a lovey-dovey. And I'm like, man, I'm faithful. Mm -hmm. You know, you it's your first. You're like, I'm faithful. Like, yeah, she ain't going nowhere. And I'm I not going, going to, you know, exactly. nowhere. Exactly. But the more and more, you know, me and her was kept talking. And and she just, she wanted to take another step into the relationship. Again, I don't know if she talked to other people. But at least in my mind, I thought I was the only one. Gotcha. <laughs> right? So so she said, um, like, Nick, um, you you out of high school now. You should move in with me. Mm. Let's get a place together. Keep in mind, I'm putting the two and two together. I uh, I know how a family structure looks like. Mm -hmm. Husband, wife, children. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, she's not my wife. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to move with a woman that she's not my wife? Oh, I'm talking to some man right now that failed to put a ring on it. Yeah. And they want to move in with those women. And women that's inviting those men to stay in the house, house yeah. and he ain't put a ring on it, right? Yeah. That's the, the women I'm talking to because I can relate because it happened to me. Yeah. So I told her, I, to, I told her, I told my girl, I said, nah, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm good with my auntie. I'm good. I said, look, we still could kick it, but I'm not going to move in with you. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, suppose she probably may have gotten upset at me because of my response. So as a result, um, she ended up not talking to me. Okay. And I'm like, man, why is she not talking to me? So I did some investigation. Again, when somebody take, well, when you lose your virginity, your mind is gone. Mm -hmm. You don't hear from that other person that you desire. Mm -hmm. You're going to constantly, you know, the flesh going to be like, hey, where's that person? So did some investigation going around and then come to find out um, I didn't have a car back then. I must have been like 20 years old at the time. And then um, somebody told me where she lived, where she moved to. And then I walked there. And when I knocked on her door, it was this dude with his boxes. Mm. And then the dude came to the door and she came to the door and she said, you didn't know what you wanted. So I moved forward. Oh. Wow, that crushed you, huh? <sighs> I got to pause right here because this happened to somebody right now. And yeah. they might be listening to this episode like I could relate to this dude. Yeah. That girl crushed me. It crushed you, yeah. Like I like when I was talking to the when I was talking to her and we did our sexual activities, like I had no thought of cheating on her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not the best singer 
but I used to sing her at <laughs> 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 Y'all, he was he was serenading people. <laughs> I used to mercy. sing to her, bought teddy bears for her, flowers, and my heart just got squeezed and beat up on and crushed and stumped. And I'm 20 years old at this time. And I I remember, and I got to say this, you know, I'm, I, I like to be detailed because I like to be real. Mm -hmm. Like these are the after effects in mm -hmm. sense. I don't like just to say stuff and be like, well, that's it. Like, what did you do afterwards? When I went home, Adney, I started playing R&B songs. Lord, I started singing. Lord. Would you tell me? Tell me. <laughs> you know that happened to some people, right? They Let just they just not bold enough to say it in yeah, public. I don't yeah. care. God delivered no. me. Men, yeah. men and women, we all have the thing that we do when that person breaks our hearts, right? I love music, so I would I did the same thing. Yeah. Um, but what what I want to share is before you continue is sometimes we women we look at men and we say, oh, he's a dog or he's this because he hurts you. But you have to understand that your 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 sex may have done something to him and he just retaliated against yeah. all the sexes, right? Mm -hmm. So you know I'm going somewhere with that. I want us women to understand that if you, it, and it's men too, if you know for a fact that this is not a person that you intend to spend the rest of your life with, leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Leave them alone. We play too many <coughs> games out here and when I say out here, I'm talking about in the church and outside of the church. We don't intend to go farther than what the bedroom allows. And after that, you're done. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So now we are getting ready to talk about what happened to you after she cheated. <laughs> 